Hey, good morning and welcome to Game Brigade. I am Brian Greer and today we're doing the channel, uh, I was going to say should you back, it's literally not a should you back, it has nothing to do with should you back. Uh, it's the Kickstarter callback, uh, Kickstarter look back. Uh, we've changed the name a few times, I'd like to figure out a, a new name for the series because it has changed and I've liked the direction where it's gone. It's gone from just talking about what I backed on Kickstarter month to month to more of encapsulating like my gamer lifestyle uh, month to month and how things have shifted, how things are coming and going. So that's what today's episode is. If you're interested for that, please stay tuned to watch because I love having you guys here and we're also going to talk about a little bit about the channel. So stay tuned for more. Okay, so I wanted to at least, let's start this off with like the dry stuff, the boring stuff. Channel update. Things are going good for the channel. We've had some great growth for the month of July. Uh, we were up in terms of my analytics, uh, almost double in terms of my growth. So I'm very happy about that. Thank you for everyone who joined. I will say it's probably because we had one video uh, very much do better than a lot of my other videos on average. And that was the, um, what I regretted backing. And I think that video probably talked to a lot of people on a deeper level, uh, cause we've all had issues where we back games. We regret, I mean, there's games where I've backed and literally as soon as I got the email that it's funded, um, and that I've been charged, you know, you're like, oh, you know, should I back that game? I don't know. And you start to get that little, uh, little tinge of regrets. And that's one of the reasons why I've been trying to cool off on every Kickstarter and be like, okay, this is a game I want. Before I back it, let's wait a week. And if I'm still thinking about that game after a week, if it's still something I think it could fit my collection, then we'll figure out, we'll go from there. You know, it doesn't mean I'm still gonna back it, you know, cause there's more that goes involved with my collection curation. Um, but that's, uh, you know, whatever. So that's, that's been it. I, I'm pretty, I was pretty happy with that episode. It kind of also made me realize I should probably do more of conversational pieces. I've talked about how I wanted this channel to have conversation pieces. It used to be part of my intro, if you guys remember right. Um, but I've kind of stopped doing a lot of the conversation pieces, but it seems like, uh, people, like them. In fact, uh, I was watching Board Game Co's, he had a video he did maybe a month ago, and he talked about how, Alex talked about how he skips every video that's like a review or like talking about a specific game, unless it's a game he's really interested in, and he watches the videos where people like chat, and I'm like, you know what, I actually kind of do the same, like, I don't watch people's specific reviews because, you know, I've already played that game, the only time I ever do that is after I've played the game, and I kind of want to see if like, confirmation bias like was I right or was I wrong or what did people think but I watch every single video that people post where they're just talking about their collection or talking about themselves or whatever so I was like you know what maybe I should do that some more so that's my hope and I'd like to kind of hear what you guys thought is that something you guys do or what what would be like the most optimal content you guys would like to do like to see let me know in the comments down below um, going forward I, I do want to talk about Something I mentioned in a video not too long ago where I talked about the type of content as a YouTuber we have to post. And there's two types of content. You have to post content for your returning subscribers, the people who follow your channel, who know you, who know your personality, they come for you. But then you also have to post videos that are specifically geared towards like tar targeting new audiences. And um, that's how you get more subscribers right? You had to have videos targeted for new people and you have videos targeted for your subscriber base. And I'm trying to figure out the best balance for that. Uh, because obviously I do the videos, I do the whole thing. This whole thing is for my subscribers, right? You know, that's why we do this show. I think that's why everyone does their shows, uh, is to, you know, give back to the community in some way. Um, but I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on some of my, videos because there's videos that do really well and there's videos that don't do well. So I'm trying to figure out how do I get more people to watch, but also target uh, a newer audience. One of the things that I tried to do, and I'm still, I'm still working on it, was the um, weekly Kickstarter content where we're, where we talk about every game that's coming out on Kickstarter. Now, I 
I've pretty much was like, okay, looking at my channel, I want to be a big box Kickstarter, like the games that I like. I want to talk about games I like. I want to talk about things that drive me forward. The reason I'm in this in this uh, space is pretty much because of Kickstarter. I, I like Kickstarter products. Like that's kind of what I like to buy uh, for myself. So I was like, okay, I want to be the Kickstarter guy. I want to be a focusing around that. Uh, so I started the weekly, you know, what's coming out. Problem is those, those those viewerships on those goes back and forth. And that's my like, hey, here's for new viewers. It's also for subs returning subscribers if that's something you're interested in. I don't suspect everyone's going to watch that. But I kind of want to get people's takes on them. We had people saying, hey, we want to hear about what you're interested in. I don't really care about all these other games because, you know, I would say 80% of them are pretty chaff. You know, they're, they're filler. So I started a second episode, which was kind of like maybe a bi-weekly of here's everything that I like like I recommended and let's see if it still holds up now that it's live. What do I think about it? You know, am I considering backing this? Is there things that I didn't like now that it's live and you know, whatnot. So that's, there's two series that come from that. I want to get you guys opinions on those. If there's anything you'd like to see. So that's pretty much it. I think, Oh, I've got my Google listening to me. That's pretty much it in terms of channel updates and talking about it. Uh, so I think we can uh, talk about what I played and this week was a, a lot of repeating of the same game. And uh, so let me go back to the beginning of the month here and see we are in July. We're looking at July. So we had uh, some more Dwellings of Elder Vale, this bad boy. That game is still fun. I think I would adjust my rating. I gave that game a 9.2 uh, when I initially rated it. I think as I've played it, I think the rating for myself has adjusted. It's still a high game. I still like the tableau building. I still like its area control aspects. I like the scoring dynamic in terms of how it scores the points. So it makes you uh, really have to target different types of things. Um, but the combat's a little lackluster. And uh, I would like to have a little bit more asymmetry symmetry with the factions. I mean, there's, there's, it's there, but you know, whatever. So I think I would probably change my rating to from a 9.2, which is like pinnacle of top of the gaming, probably to an 8.8. .8. I will not adjust the video or change anything like that, but this is just like conversationally, like after I've played that game a bunch more times continually, and that's probably about to happen. There's games that are probably going to go up after I play them. And there's games that are probably going to go down after I play them. Some games that are probably remain the same. But I would say Dwellings of Elder Vale 8.8. .8. Uh, we then had a bunch of Soul Raider games played for the, the review for the Kickstarter First Impressions. That's live now. So if you're interested in checking that out, check out my channel. You can probably find uh, somewhere down there. It's uh, the Soul Raiders First Impressions. And then we had... A million Too Many Bones games. And uh, really one, love the Trove Chest. Huge supporter of the Trove Chest. If you have all the Too Many Bones content, that makes it such a breeze to set up and tear down. Because Too Many Bones, as it, as it is, one of the worst tear downs, set up and tear down games I've played. It is a beast to get to the table. But once you get playing, it's super su simple and super fun. And it's the first adventure game I could say I've played in a while, which has a variety of different types of characters that after we play a game, people want to play their character again because they, they learn something new or they want to try refining their build, whatever. So I think that was pretty interesting. A lot of times people were like, oh, I'm trying a new character now. Let me try something different. But this one people want to keep going back to. So too many bones. We have a ton of that. We also started our new um, weekly legacy, actually bi-weekly legacy night, where we're going to have a specific group of people that want to play campaign games that are part of my, my group. We pretty much do weekly board game nights where we do one-shot games, no campaign games. And we have a lot of campaign games starting to arrive. So I was like, shoot, I need to really need to hammer it down, find out who's committed to playing a weekly or bi-weekly campaign game. We got those people. And so we started with Betrayal Legacy. And that was one that I probably would be a little lower in terms of my wanting to play. Um, but I've had it for a while. I did the unboxing. I hear great things about Betrayal. I've never played Betrayal. So I was like, let's play it. So we played a few games of Betrayal. Also, I think my tr first true legacy game like you know like you have a pandemic legacy betrayal legacy risk legacy the actual true legacy title in the name that's probably my first one and i and i 
I've played games like Loomhaven, which have legacy elements, and I never tear up the cards. I always find a way to avoid tearing them up. Uh, but for this one, I said, you know what? I'm going all in. I'm going to enjoy tearing the cards up when it says uh, destroy this card. I'm all in. And it's been kind of nice. So next thing we did is we played some Deliverance. Just got this in. This will be a review very shortly. Uh, played a few games of this one. Really enjoy it. Um, uh, definitely a interesting little, um, I, I, how would you describe it? Uh, movement, area control, powers and abilities game. Uh, but it's co-op. And so you're going against the game, obviously. And uh, the biggest thing with this one is the darkness mechanic where it's got a, a clock that you're kind of playing against. And so it's you can't just go ham bone every game because the game is preventing you from doing it. So that was Deliverance. We bought, and then we got more Too Many Bones. So many games. Chili Mafia. Where is that? It's down here. <sighs> Played some more games of Chili Mafia in there. Uh, this was a game we just did a first impressions on. Kickstarter is going live. Uh, as of the time of this filming, it's going live tomorrow. So if you are um, interested in checking out Chili Mafia, this is a fun little casual game. Uh, it's got some take that mechanics, but it's not take that in the sense that it's like so like annoyingly frustrating to play against. Um, Got to put my phone on D&D. Uh, so it's got some take that mechanics, but it's not like take that mechanics that feels like it's like going to ruin your day. There's some games that take that mechanics that really sour me. Like I'm like, ah, I don't want to. That was really mean. Why would you do that? Uh, didn't really feel like that with that one. And uh, liked kind of the deeper aspects of the game. It's still a light game, um, but there was some play to it. Then we got some Chronicles of Dronagor, and which we'll talk about in a second, and Brass Birmingham. Also have some Oros. I didn't register this one, but I do know we played this one. Uh, Oros. This is another game. So we've got Oros, Deliverance, and Chronicles of Dronagor are all going to be reviewed this month. And I'm trying my hardest. So here's the, the content calendar. I really want to get Chronicles of Dronagor. I believe there's about eight days left in the campaign. So I want to get this guy done as quick as I can. Oros has a little bit longer campaign, but I still want to get my review up for him because I've really enjoyed my plays with this game and uh, very much, very exciting. This one is actually, would probably be my pick of the week um, or pick of the month if it hadn't been for like, like COD is very good. So, but the fact that this little worker placement um, area movement game is able to compete with a game that's more up my alley, which is like a minis dungeon crawler. Pretty impressive. And then the final game I played, which was part of my Shelf of Shame video of 2020, was Brass Birmingham. And my God, if you are a Euro player, if you like grindy mechanics, that is a game I would uh, say could be for you. Had a lot of fun. Definitely a game though, as I'm playing it, as we're trying to, as trying to get through it, I was like, you really have to think through things because you're like, man, it becomes like almost, I think every worker placement or uh, Euro game has me doing this, but I'm like thinking like three turns ahead. I constantly feel like I'm behind and uh, you you can't do some things you want to do because of the the train or the boat mechanic in it. Um, definitely an interesting game. Can't wait to get it to the board again. Um, but I have found myself leaning more towards like your uh, Amero trash, which I hate that word. I wish there was a better word, but more like dicey rolly games or or more variability. Brass Birmingham and a lot of those other euros are so mechanically clean that it's they're they're sometimes a little too dry still had a great time i would still rate it very highly in terms of its gameplay because it's very good uh but in terms of uh that's that's what i played in terms of acquired you guys can see what i acquired in the month of july as you can see here uh we also got and this is a little bit of a stretch because i didn't get it uh technically in july but whatever i'm gonna still show you what i got got this today this showed up today and don't know what's inside it. I have a sneaking suspicion of what it is. Um, so I'm gonna cut away real quick. We're gonna take this out and see what it is. Uh, so 
This is Tsukuyumi. I don't Tsukuyumi. I don't know how to pronounce it. Trying my best. I wish someone would correct me if I'm wrong, or maybe no one knows how to pronounce it. Uh, but this was a game. This was a game I actually had on my games I regretted backing because it took so freaking long. Also, they shipped the playmat folded. So I wanted. To, I literally left this as I got it, so you guys could see it. But that is. That is a pet peeve of mine. Don't fold playmats, guys. Come on now. You can ruin it. But this is a game that I have um, uh, been waiting for forever. Like, this is like two years late. And uh, I do know that this arrived in the U.S. maybe four or five months ago. And there were some problems with the, the packages that got shipped out from the original manufacturer that um, went to Europe first. And so European backers were like opening their Kickstarters and like, hey, this is all screwed up. There's a whole bunch of problems here. Um, so I believe when this arrived in the US, they recalled all of the games back to their home base, I think in Illinois or something, and held them for us. And then they did a special order through their um, manufacturer to fix some of the problems and then had them flighted flown over back from China and then basically rebuilt our pledges hopefully with the new items now I can't guarantee I'm, I'm actually probably going to do one of my classic unboxings with my three camera setup so we can actually get an idea of what the contents of this are I I had talked about not opening this game and just selling it because I was like, is this something I'm still into? Is this a game I still want in my collection? The box is pretty. It's long, so I can't really display it like I'd want to display it. And another upsetting thing is on the back of the box, it's not too visible. You probably, you guys won't see it, but there is a little indention here on the back of the box. So there's some box damage. And what's funny is I always talk about like, I'm not too big of a concern about box damage, but as I've become more of a collector, I'd like my stuff. I want my stuff to at least come new. So that's a little annoying. Um, but that is my acquireds. Like, so I didn't buy anything this month, really. Um, just just the Chronicles of Dronagor is the only thing I think. Uh, Oros, that's a prototype. This is a prototype. Deliverance is a prototype. This was a Kickstarter from two years ago. In fact, this actually got delivered to my mom's house. My mom lives in my old house. And um, so when I told her I had a box showing up, she's like, what did you buy? And I'm like, I didn't buy anything. I bought it two years ago. And she goes, you lie. I'm like, I'm serious. I bought this two years ago. She doesn't believe me that uh, it takes two years for Kickstarters to show up. Uh, but that is that. The final thing, what do we, is that everything? Final thing. Uh, oh, yeah. What did I back? The whole point of the show. What did I back? All right. We have an update from last month. We talked about Wild Ascent, and I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with Love on Rising, if I wanted to back that one. I was kind of, you know, Wild Ascent is good as it is, but it did need that 1.5 fix, and that's supposed to be Wild Ascent, or Love on Rising. And then Storm Sunder comes up. And the question of, do you go with Storm Sunder, or do you go with Wild Ascent, or do I be weak-willed and go with both? So what I did is I went with both. I I felt like I need to get Wild Ascent Levon Rising to fix Wild Ascent's minor issues that I had with it. So I ended up just backing just that expansion and that's it i'm not going any deeper in terms of expansions or paid add-ons just doing the expansion which is the first for me in many respects i mean you guys can see like this is an all-in pledge i just got right just massive um so i don't norm normally do stuff like that uh, so i was actually pretty proud of myself but storm sunder after doing some digging and digging i was like you know what this might be more of my alley. This might be the kind of game I'm looking for. So I went in on Storm Sunder for that one, all in. <laughs> but that was that was an update from June. For this month, we have Chronicles of Dronagor, 
Age of Darkness Apocalypse, which I am backed in, backing on that one. This here is just the retail version of COD, and it doesn't include the Kickstarter exclusives. So I need to get the Kickstarter exclusive. I, there's some stuff from the first campaign that I need to pick up. So I'm going to pick those up in the... I might actually buy a second copy of this and sell this copy uh, or sell the new copy when it arrives. So that's really lame that I had to do that. But for cost effectiveness to be able to get first campaign stuff that I want after playing this um, and get it, just to be cost effective, it's almost better for me to buy everything and then, then sell the base game. Um, so that's probably what I'm going to do. Unfortunately, uh, I did want to talk about game of the month because we played a ton of too many bones and then Chronicles of Renegade showed up and that kind of held our too many bone games up. And I was going to say too many bones game of the month. But there was a real competition between this game and Too Many Bones. And I, I don't know if I could actually say which one's better. They're totally two different games. Chronicles is much easier in terms of the gameplay mechanics. Too Many Bones has so many individual mechanics of every baddie that you have to understand and learn that it, can, it, it makes it more difficult. It's a very big grindy puzzle that you have to figure out. Uh, Chronicles of Dragon much simpler. The baddies in this one hit like a truck, and the way they have mo they don't roll dice; they just hit. So everything is just a hit. Uh, is interesting. So definitely really enjoyed this game. The story has been pretty good so far, uh, which I've enjoyed. I want to get a little deeper into it. The only thing that kind of stinks is because I don't have some of the expansion characters uh, or Kickstarter exclusive characters. The base game characters they're not bad. I'm playing Lorelai the Mage. Um, but I would like to have a paladin. I, I, I'm a paladin player in WoW. I wanted to play a paladin. There's no paladins here. So I was like, man, do I continue with the campaign or do I wait until I get those expansion stuff and go from there? I know it's a lot of whiny, you know, pointless stuff, but you know, whatever. That's how we are gamers. There's so many other things I could play in the meantime that I could shelve this for a year and come back to it and not feel guilty about it. But that does sound weird if you, you know, it's a gamer thing. It's a board gamer thing. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? But that's, that's it. So we covered channel update, what I played, what I got, let go. Did I let go anything? I didn't sell anything. Unfortunately, I do need to make some more room. I've got a pile of stuff I'm going to be selling. Um, but sometimes I want, I've been having this like thing of wanting to, here's another rant, uh, tangent, uh, I've been having this thing of like, ah, maybe I should play that game again before I sell it, just to make sure. I've got a Myth game. It's called Myth. It's a, it's a dungeon crawler. I was thinking about letting that go. I've got New York 1901. I've got Kingdom Builder. I had some people tell me, oh, no, you don't want to get rid of Kingdom Builder. I'm like, really? I haven't played that in so long. Um, game of Thrones, um, the board game, never played it. Um, do I sell it? Do I keep it? I don't know. I'd love to have your guys' thoughts. Um on what, what you think. I do need to get some room though. I've got maybe a little bit of a shelf space, <laughs> shelf, space yeah, shelf space left before I'm really in trouble. Then I have to go to the second floor and start putting stuff upstairs where I'm never going to see it. And the whole point of my collection is to enjoy it and view it. You know, that's how it works. But that's it. Uh, so uh, in terms of, oh shoot, I didn't tell you guys, upcoming videos, the things that I have that I want to do. Um, oh shoot, that's going to be really lo loud. Uh, I wanted to do the Kickstarters that are coming out in the month of August that I'm really excited about. So hopefully I can get that out relatively soon because the longer we get in August, um, the less relevance that video has. And I would have filmed it earlier in July, but it was my birthday weekend. So just with family and planning things, everything kind of got really delayed a week. So still trying to work it out. Uh, I want it. I still have to do my Kickstarter weeklies and unless you guys tell me to stop them entirely, we'll keep doing them. Um, and then, uh, I had some more stuff I want to talk about, but I can't remember. I, that's why I write things down so I can remember, but I didn't write it down. So we'll just end it here. So I don't have to sit here and ramble. <laughs> if you guys like this comment or this content, please leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think of this rambling session in my in my board game office uh otherwise i can't wait to uh, get this uploaded and talk to you guys very soon so talk to you guys in the comment section leave a thumbs up subscribe if you're new i will talk to you all later